Na kolejnym panelu, panelu szóstym samorządowym, a przed rozpoczęciem panelu dyskusyjnego bardzo bym poprosił naszego gościa specjalnego, pana profesora Ewangelosa Elefterio, Head of the Cloud and Computing Infrastructure Department z IBM Zurich Laboratorium Badawcze. Bardzo proszę, I invite you for the presentation. Good afternoon. First, I would like to thank you for the opportunity uh, to present at this conference. In my talk, I'd like to give an overview of uh, IBM Research's point of view on what we call the triangle of innovation, which comprises uh, science, government, and business. But before I talk about this topic, I'd like to say a few words about IBM Research. IBM Research has presence in almost all continents, from the Northern Hemisphere to the Southern Hemisphere. The little red circles indicate the locations on the globe where IBM has research labs. We basically try to get talent wherever it is in the established markets or in the growth areas. We work with uh, the academia. We work with uh, our clients. We work jointly also with the government. The latest addition to these uh, 13 labs are primarily all located in the South Hemisphere, the so-called growth areas, like in Brazil, in Kenya, South Africa, and also Australia. A few words about my lab, the Zurich Research Laboratory, which is one of the oldest research labs worldwide of IBM. It was established back in 1956 in Zurich. It is located in a beautiful area. You can see in the picture, it overlooks the lake of Zurich. It's like a campus. And back, you can see also the city of Zurich. It is a very international place uh, with 45, more than 45 uh, nationalities. Uh, the language we speak there is English, and some of the foreigners really have difficulties to, to learn German because on the daily business they communicate in English. We are clearly very open to collaboration, uh, not only with, as I mentioned before, clients, but also participate in uh, EU-funded projects like the Horizon 2020, where we have 28 funded projects and 170 plus partners. We are clearly very proud for our two Nobel Prizes in, fix, in, in physics, back to back in 1986 and 1987. The first one for the invention of the scanning tunneling microscope by Heinrich Rohrer and Gerd Binig. And the second one for the discovery of high temperature superconductivity by Alex Miller and Georg Bernholz. We also are proud for our nine European Research Council grants, the so-called ERCs, which are quite lucrative for our resistance agenda. <clears throat> this slide shows the structure at the high level of our laboratory. Basically, it comprises three departments, the cognitive computing and industry solutions, the cloud and computing infrastructure, and the foundation, which is science and technology. I'm responsible for the department in the middle. Therefore, we're doing research from big data to tiny atoms. IBM research is the driving force for patent leadership. 
we were able to lead in this race for number of patents for 23 consecutive years. In 2015, we were granted in the US only 7,355 patents, a number that it is higher than the total number of patents in the same year by Google, Microsoft, and General Electric. So this is extremely important for innovation. It's extremely important also for the future in the era of big data. Now, how do we do research and what has happened to IBM over the years? Back in the 50s, IBM was a pure hardware company. And the research was corporate research, isolated. We were not collaborating with anybody. We were doing research for the sake of research. And we were quite successful. But we didn't strive to have impact to the product development, to the product roadmap. We were just doing research. In the 90s, IBM embraced software and serv services. And the level of collaboration of research started increasing. Then we started having joint projects, joint projects also within IBM, with the divisions. We were trying to work with them to make technology transfer to them, to make sure that their ro product roadmap is sustainable. But we also started working with clients, trying to address their problems. We also started working and collaborating with universities through joint research agreements, and of course, the government. Now, at the beginning of the 21st century, the research collaboration increased even further because we were looking at long-term and, strate and strategic. So we, we basically were focusing in the, the world is research, and we were trying to tackle business and societal challenges, what we call internally grand challenges. So IBM at the same time was moving from, or embracing even more, from hardware, software, and services to the smarter planet and also cognitive business. So this gives you an overview of how research transformed following suit of the transformation of the IBM Corporation. This little chart shows the model of collaboration at a very, very high level. We have, for example, our teams working with uh, clients short term uh, to provide consulting or to provide future outlook or trends in forecasting. This may last for days to months. But we also have joint research on game-changing technologies joint research agreement, joint development agreements with other companies. And this can last longer, should last longer, one to three years. But then we can also have collaborations that can extend all the way to 10 years, where there is intellectual property licensing, long-term joint development engagements with, again, government, and you will see examples, as well as the rest of the industry in areas where we don't compete. And there are areas we don't compete. So the short-term engagements are having tactical impact, whereas the long-term have clearly strategic impact. Here are now some examples. In 2009, we have a public-private partnership in nanotechnology with ETH, the well-known university in Switzerland, and EMPA. EMPA is a research institution for material science. So we build this nanotech center that you see in the picture, which is located in the campus of our research lab. It is an investment of $60 million in infrastructure and an additional $30 million in tooling 
and also the day-to-day -day operation expenses. So there, basically, we work on future devices, uh, exotic devices, if you wish. We try to understand the physics behind it. And we do have in our campus four full-time professors, more than 50 students who have access to the Nano Center, and they work together with IBMers. That's an example. We take advantage of this example, and this is a project that we have which is really exploratory far into the future. But the foundation is in the collaboration we have with ETH. A strategic direction for IBM is neuromorphic computing and quantum computing. Therefore, we established a partnership with the two main leading in institutions, universities in Switzerland, EPFL and ETH, and we got funding from the Swiss government to pursue memristive-based synaptronic devices for future neuromorphic computing. That's another example of how we collaborate with academia and the government. A third example is the IBM Center for Blockchain Innovation. It's again, first of a kind collaboration with the government of Singapore and the Monetary Authority of Singapore, working on uh, blockchain, cybersecurity, cognitive computing. The center, the goal of this center is to engage small and medium-sized enterprises to create new applications and grow new markets in finance and trade. Another example is in the area of cybersecurity. This is a strategic direction for the Australian government. So we basically built a national cybersecurity center in Australia, which aims to foster even greater collaboration with government and businesses who align with this strategic direction of the Australian government. We try to tackle the growing sophistication and persistence of the organized cybercrime, and it is clearly directly aligned with the agenda and will see the support of the government and Australia businesses as they evolve their cybersecurity capabilities. Another example is the so-called Green Horizons project. We all know the serious problem of pollution in Beijing. Therefore, our IBM research colleagues in Beijing, there is an IBM research lab in Beijing, in collaboration with the Beijing Environmental Protection Bureau, decided to basically work on tackling the pollution problem. So basically, they are able to design support systems to generate high resolution, one kilometer by one kilometer pollution forecasts for 72 hours in advance and pollution trend predictions for up to 10 days into the future. It models and predicts the effects of weather on the flow and dispersal of pollutants. And finally, we have also the so-called IBM Corporate Service Core. The IBM Corporate Service Core has served hundreds of communities in approximately 37 developing countries. It was launched back in 2008. Participants from all over the world have um, engaged into projects that basically interest the business, technology, and the government, and tackle problems from developing new technology that support bargaining tourism, helping prevent violence, or promote digital entrepreneurship. Closing, I would like to say that clearly the triangle of innovation addresses the grand challenges of our society that include healthcare, environment, sustainable cities, food supply chain, agriculture, security, and safety, and energy. It is the intersection of those three forces that form the triangle of innovation, academia, government, and industry, 
the so-called PPP, which is at the center, which is public-private partnerships, which is essential for the success. Thank you very much.